my name is Dr. Olivia Moses and welcome to Wellness Live. We're very excited to have you. This program is brought to you by the Living Whole Wellness Program in the Department of Risk Management here at Loma Linda University Health. We have a very interesting topic for you today. Have you heard all the news about meat and have you actually thought about becoming a vegetarian? Well, we have a really great presentation for you. I'm very excited to introduce you to Esmeralda Guerrero. She is actually one of our very own. She is one of our dietitians in the Living Whole Wellness Program, and she's here to talk to you today about vegetarianism and is it worth it? To you, Esmeralda. Thank you. So today's topic, like Dr. Moses said, is vegetarianism, is it worth it? And we'll be talking today about many things. And I'm not sure if you're aware, but actually October is Vegetarian Awareness Month, which is a perfect time to go or explore the different types of vegetarian diets, their benefits, and how they can actually be incorporated into your regular meal schedule. So let's get started. Now, according to the latest poll, the Harris um, Interactive poll in 2008, there were 3.2% of US adults that are vegetarians. Now, that is about 7.3 million vegetarians in the United States. So it seems like vegetarian diets are becoming just more and more common. Now, back in 2013, PS244 the first, was the first public school in New York and in the nation for that matter to become the first one to adopt an all vegetarian menu in their public school. Now here at Loma Linda actually, for the last about 100 years, Loma Linda University Medical Center has adopted an all vegetarian menu that it offers to its visitors, employees, and patients. So vegetarian diets have been around for quite some time and they seem to become more and more popular as time goes by. Now, Meatless Monday, which is inter an international campaign that promotes not eating meat on Monday, has become more and more popular. And um, it essentially just promotes not eating meat on Mondays and in order just to provide good health to the individuals and health for the planet. Now, many organizations, hospitals, universities, restaurants, school districts, and more are choosing to join the movement. Many celebrities like Oprah Winfrey and Jessica Simpson have joined the movement as well. And Mario Batali, actually, a chef, has embraced the meatless movement in all of his 14 restaurants across the country. Now, when it comes to vegetarian diets, people make the assumption that it's just eliminating the meat from your meals, but it's a little bit more complicated than that because there are different types of vegetarian diets. For example, there is the vegan diet that includes mostly just plant-based foods, but also does not include any animal products or byproducts like eggs, honey, and dairy products. Now we have the lacto-vegetarian diet that does incorporate plant-based foods and it also includes dairy products in that diet. And the lacto-ovo-vegetarian diet includes plant-based foods along with dairy and eggs. And then we have the semi or partial vegetarian, which may include chicken, fish, and also dairy products and eggs. However, it does not incorporate any red meat at all. And then we have this pescatarian diet, which incorporates seafood. So it's not just as simple as eliminated meat. There are different types of vegetarian diets and it's important to understand the, dif the different um, diets out there. Now, there are many different reasons why people choose to become vegetarian. Some do it for environmental concerns, some do it for health benefits, others for animal rights or religious beliefs. Now, there are many myths out there in regards to vegetarian diets. I've heard, I think, all of them. And I think this is probably the most popular one out there that I hear all the time. Vegetarian diets do not provide enough protein. Now this is of course false. It seems like meat has become a synonym of protein and many consumers struggle to actually identify non-meat sources of protein and we'll actually be talking about this as we go on. Another common myth out there is that all vegetarians are calcium deficient, and of course this is false. There are many plant-based food uh, sources of calcium, and we'll also talk about this as we go on. 
Another common myth is that all vegetarian diets are healthy and that it's also false. A vegetarian or vegan label does not equal good health all the time. So we'll also talk about this as we move forward. Now, the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics has indicated the following position. Well-planned vegetarian diets are appropriate for individuals during all stages of the life cycle, including pregnancy, lactation, infancy, childhood, adolescence, and even for athletes. So it's something that can be incorporated through any life cycle that an individual may be in. Now, I mentioned earlier that many individuals associate vegetarianism with equaling healthy all the time. And that's not necessarily true. As you can see here, we have several items that can easily be classified as vegetarian foods, but that doesn't mean they're healthy. For example, Many of these can be really high in sugar and many unhealthy fats. Therefore, it's very mindful. Um, it's important to be mindful and recognize the importance of reading that nutrition facts label and looking for things that are low in saturated fat, low in cholesterol, and low in sodium. Now, Something interesting, actually, um, just this week, uh, processed meats made headlines in the news. It seems like every other news media out there is actually covering processed meat because every, um, actually, the World Health Organization just released a report this Monday that um, it was they conducted a study and it looked like. Uh, they looked through more than 800 studies that looked at possible links between the consumption of processed or red meat and cancer. And most of the studies focused on associations with colon cancer in particular. The most powerful links were seen with colon cancer, but there was also associations with, with pancreatic and prostate cancer. And this is just made headlines throughout this week in the many news media coverage. There's many articles out there that are um, being written in regards to processed meats. Now, back in 2010, researchers from Harvard School of Public Health actually found that eating processed meats such as bacon, sa sausage, and the deli meats was associated with a 42% higher risk of heart disease and a 19% higher risk of type 2 diabetes. Now, Another study that was published back in 2012 also discovered that eating processed meat, such as uh, one hot dog or two servings or two servings of bacon, two slices of bacon, was associated with a 20% increase in the risk of cardiovascular disease breath, um, death. Now, therefore, it's very important to upgrade the protein in your plate and start consuming things that are uh, healthier protein sources out there, like tofu, beans, and nuts. Now. I mentioned earlier that the many reasons that people become vegetarians, and one of them was the health benefits. And many studies have in fact shown that there are, that vegetarians have lower rates of many of the chronic diseases, such as cardiovascular disease, hypertension, obesity, type two diabetes, and some cancers. And there's also the benefit of weight loss. Several studies have found that vegetarians tend to be slimmer than omnivores. And the reason why, because grains, legumes, fruits, and vegetables tend to be high in fiber and other imp important nutrients like phytochemicals. So those are some of the reasons why uh, vegetarians experience these many benefits. Now, an Adventist Health Study 2 that was conducted out of here at Loma Linda University, back in 2011, it was published that a vegetarian diet was linked to lower levels of C-reactive protein, which is a marker for, of inflammation. Therefore, um, we want this number to be low, and that the, the finding was that the diet, the vegetarian diet, was linked to lower levels of this marker. Another study, Back in, published back in 2013, uh, found that compared to the non-vegetarians, vegetarians had almost a 10% reduced risk of all cancers combined, another benefit of the vegetarian diets. 
Now, I mentioned earlier that there's this belief that vegetarian diets do not meet or do not provide adequate protein. And here we have an example of how easily you can actually meet the requirements. Protein can be found in legumes such as beans, peas, and lentils. Soy milk and soy products have protein. One cup has about eight grams of protein. And then you can also find protein in nuts and seeds and other bean products out there like hummus spreads and bean spreads. So it's easy to actually be able to meet those requirements. And I'll show you a sample menu of how an individual can easily meet those requirements. Now, when somebody chooses to become vegetarian, they get excited and maybe they start leaning on eating the meat substitutes, the, those veggie um, burgers that might, they use them as a replacement of the meat. Now it's very important to watch out for these items here because just because you replace the meat with the veggie burger, or many of these meat substitutes doesn't necessarily mean that it's more healthy. So we want you to watch out for the added oils in those, the hydrogen, hydrogenated fats and the sodium and the monosodium glutamate because these are things that not necessarily mean that these items are healthier. So when eating meats to be mindful of things like this. Now I mentioned earlier how there's this misconception of vegetarian diets not providing adequate protein. And here is a sample menu of actually an individual that is five feet, 10 inches tall and weighs about 165 pounds according to the requirement, which is 0.8 grams per kilograms of body weight an individual needs about 60 grams of protein daily in order to meet the requirements. And so here is a sample of how easily this individual can meet his requirements. And here for breakfast, if he consumes a cup of oatmeal with soy milk and bagel, that has about 20 grams of protein. And for lunch, if he eats two slices of whole wheat bread along with half a cup of baked beans, that has about 19 grams. And then for dinner, a tofu meal with one cup of cooked broccoli and brown rice and almonds has about 25 grams of protein. And as a snack, he can have two tablespoons of peanut butter and six whole grain crackers, and that has roughly about 10 grams. So to total this up, this is about 77 grams. So we can see that an individual weighing about 165 pounds and being about five feet, 10 inches tall, would need about 60 grams. So it's very easy to actually be able to meet those protein requirements. And of course, the needs for protein vary based on different factors such as age, gender, and whether the individual has a, a very rigorous physical activity regimen. So the protein needs may vary. However, it's very easy to actually meet the requirements for protein. Now, another misconception out there is that vegetarians are not, are, are calcium deficient. And here we can see that dairy is not the only source out there when it comes to calcium. There are many other plant-based sources for calcium. For example, soy milk, collard greens, and actually bok choy, and then also broccoli is a great source of calcium. Black-eyed peas, one cup has about 211 milligrams, and then also calcium set tofu is a great source of calcium. And the recommended intake for most adults is about 1,000 milligrams, and um, for women over 50 and men over 70, it's about 1,200 milligrams. Now, vitamin D is another nutrient of concern when it comes to vegetarian diets. However, many of the fortified foods that the American, uh, that the American diet supply, individuals can easily meet the requirement through the, through, through the many fortified foods out there, like soy milk, like the breakfast cereals. And actually, most people meet at least some of their vitamin D intake with the sunlight exposure. Just aim for at least 10 minutes of sunlight exposure per day in order to get some of this vitamin D that we need. The goal is for 600 international units per day for everyone over the age of one. Now, vitamin B12 is also another nutrient of concern. Many people think that um, individuals that follow a vegetarian diet will be deficient in this um, 
important vitamin. However, it's very easy to meet the requirement. The recommended dietary allowance, as it indicates here, is about 2.5 four micrograms per day. And if you can see here, if you eat one, if you drink one cup of soy milk or rice milk for that matter, that has about one to three micrograms. So you can see how easily you can meet those requirements. And then if you combine it with a breakfast cereal, one serving of a B12 fortified breakfast cereal has about 1.5 micrograms. But now it becomes important if you do go for these um, sources of vitamin B12, for example, the breakfast cereals, to be mindful of the sugar content because many of the breakfast cereals out there tend to be high in sugar. So ensure that it's a, a breakfast cereal that it's not super high in sugar. But as you can see, we can easily meet our vitamin B12 requirement through nutritional yeast, fortified products like the ones I mentioned, so soy milk, rice milk, or breakfast cereals. Now, many people associate vegetarian diets with boring and bland. However, there are many recipes out there in regards to vegetarian diets. For example, for breakfast, you can have a granola yogurt parfait. You can um, combine your favorite Greek yogurt with some of your favorite fruit and granola and have that for breakfast. One of my personal favorites, the overnight oats. You can just mix your um, some oatmeal with some of your favorite puree, whether it's pumpkin or whether it's applesauce, and then just mix it with your favorite milk alternative like soy milk or rice milk or almond milk. And then if you want, you can add some honey and then just mix it overnight in a bowl or a mason jar. And then in the morning you have breakfast on the go. Another thing is scrambled tofu with veggies. It's a really great balanced meal for breakfast. You can just stir fry tofu with some of your favorite veggies. And it's a great grab and go also for the morning. And we have many more of these we actually have these recipes in our website, so feel free to check out our website. We have tons of recipes for breakfast, lunch and dinner, entrees, and even desserts. And you can just download the PDF and print it out. And it actually has the nutrition facts for every meal that we offer in our website. And th these are examples of the many meals that we have in our website. Now, to finish off, we have several recommendations. We, we don't, the whole goal of this presentation is not for you to switch to a vegetarian diet and just leave everything else behind. We want you to eat a variety of different foods each day, choose four to five foods, learn to read that nutrition facts label and learn to identify how much saturated fat, how much cholesterol are, are in items and just looking for low, or versions of that food that are low in cholesterol, low sodium, low saturated fat, and choosing protein sources that are low in fat, such as beans. So like I mentioned earlier, we're not trying to enforce here vegetarian diets. We just want you to embrace the plant-based foods, eat more veggies, eat more whole grains, eat more lean proteins, and maybe just stick with the meatless Monday. Um, just eliminate meat from your diet just one day a week. It doesn't have to be Monday. It can be on one of um, the days that you prefer, but the whole goal is to embrace more plant-based foods. Now, these are the references, and now it's time for questions. It gives us a lot to think about. So a question I have for you, um, well, we wait for some questions. So this is the time where you can actually type in your computer any questions that you have for Esmeralda about vegetarianism. So Esmeralda, what would we do if you have a person who is a meat lover? I mean, loves meat, like cannot have a meal without meat. What would your advice to them be on how they should kind of get started or is it even worth it? Would you, what would you say to them? First of all, I would start off with the Meatless Monday perhaps just eliminated meat one day a week. It could be Monday or it can be Tuesday. It could be the day that you prefer, but just eliminating meats for once or reducing and just avoiding processed foods, cutting down on your processed foods, on, on processed foods and processed meats for that matter. But I think just eliminating the meat one day a week would be, you would start get, noticing some of the health benefits that the vegetarian diets 
Another thing that you kind of mentioned was soy milks or milk substitutes. When you're choosing one, or would you advise that a person who actually drinks milk move over to that? So let's say they're not interested in becoming vegan, but with the milk that they're drinking in their cereal and that type of thing, what would you advise when it comes to milk substitutes? Yes, you know, that's a good question. Milk substitutes are a good source. And I mentioned that when you're looking or doing, uh, switching over to milk substitute, it's important to choose ones that are fortified because you wanna make sure that if, even if you're following a vegan diet, sometimes they're low in um, vegan diets. You have to be concerned about many of these nutrients like vitamin B12 and vitamin D and calcium, which are mainly found in dairy products. And so when it comes to milk substitute, my only thoughts on that is make sure that it's fortified so you can get those those important nutrients like vitamin B12, calcium that that is there. And so and if you do want to stick with the dairy, there's no problem. We talked about the lacto ovo vegetarian, the lacto vegetarian that it does incorporate dairy products in their diet. You can continue to consume dairy products. However, be mindful of the saturated fat, be mindful of the cholesterol. And those are things that you probably don't have to worry about if you switch over to the milk substitutes that you were talking about. Thank you. We have actually a really good question from you, the audience here. And the question is, if any, what supplements would you recommend for vegetarians? Do they need them? You know, if you, the key with the vegetarian diet is a variety. It's eating vegetables, eating fruits, eating lean protein, eating whole grains. If you embrace the variety and not just, I actually, when I first started undergraduate school, I, some guy was so excited to tell me that he switched to a vegetarian diet. And I'm, I was excited to find out what meals he was incorporating in his diet. And he mentioned, well, for breakfast, I had Taco Bell, a burrito, Taco Bell burrito for lunch, another Taco Bell burrito and for dinner, another Taco Bell burrito. And so the key, the key, the key with the vegetarian diet is variety. Embrace the whole grains, embrace the vegetables, embrace the fruits, and do, if you follow a vegan diet, do please incorporate the Fortify breakfast cereals or the Fortify uh, milk substitutes because you can get some of these important nutrients that I mentioned like vitamin B12, calcium, and um, vitamin D through fortified foods. Okay. The next question that we have here is, can you go vegetarian cold turkey? Is that something you should think about or avoid? I would start off with the meatless Monday. I wouldn't quit cold turkey. I've met so many individuals that just do it cold turkey, and some have that that ability and the discipline to embrace it. But if you, I recommend starting off slowly because you wanna start learning how to cook variety. And sometimes that is a challenge with people like my friend that quit cold turkey and was not aware of what he should start incorporating in his, in his diet. So therefore he just, in his mind, it was just, okay, eating this burrito that has no meat. But the key is variety of once again. And so I wouldn't quit cold turkey. I would start exploring different uh, menus out there, many uh, recipes out there, because you want to make sure that you're having variety in those meals, vegetables, fruits, whole grains, and lean protein. Great. Another question that we have is you mentioned low sodium. How much salt should I be consuming? You know, the recommendation is 2300 milligrams. If you're not if you're not dealing with hypertension or kidney failure, that's the recommendation. However, the American Heart Association actually ha is a little bit more restrictive and they recommend 1500 milligrams for everyone. But um, I would recommend 1500, 1,500 milligrams if you do have any of these conditions like kidney failure or hypertension for that matter. That's the recommendation um, for a 1,500. But in general, general it's 2,000 milligram for most Americans. And that's actually just about one teaspoon of salt. And we do, the average American does get more than that. So yes, please be mindful when choosing food items on the sodium content. 
We have another great question, and I think this probably gets into the idea of if you're becoming vegetarian that you're potentially eating more fruits and vegetables in your diet. So the, the question here is, as far as being a vegetarian, how important is organic versus GMO? You know, it is important. However, I, I'm a big firm believer that if you're not able to afford those items, there is nothing wrong with not choosing organic. I myself don't always choose organic, but if you're if it's if you're able to, I would if I, I would consume the organic. But it's something that not everybody can afford all the time. Um, if you can plant your own garden in the backyard, that would be ideal or something small, even within your uh, apartment. Uh, you can start growing some herbs here and there. But yes, if you cannot go organic, that's not an excuse to avoid the fruits and vegetables. I would still consume the fruits and vegetables in, in whatever shape and form that you can. Great. Another great question that we have coming from you, the viewer, is can you have too much protein in a vegetarian diet? That's a good question. You know, the average American that consumes meat eats actually a lot of protein and there's nothing I don't think a vegetarian has to a lot to deal with uh, or to be concerned in regards to eating more protein or um, more amounts of protein I think the concern is eating adequate amounts eating enough protein so I, I wouldn't see a concern with eating more and like I said earlier certain things certain factors sometimes allow or um, and with certain factors, you have to actually consume more protein. For example, if the individual is um, participating in a very rigorous physical, activ a physical, physical activity regimen, then the individual would require a little bit more protein. But in general, there is no concern of going above that protein recommendation. And the last question that we have in closing is where can I find a vegetarian recipe within the Loma Linda organization? Yes, yeah, so you can find that in our website. If you logged in through the link, you'll be able, I believe the link is through our website. So just explore the Living Whole website and you could also find them in the VIP page of your current employee here. You can search um, in the search box for recipe for success and you'll find the many recipes that we have there you'll find our wellness criteria and you'll find tons of also pdfs that you can download so you can actually print these recipes out and look at the nutrition facts label how much sodium it has how much cholesterol and start practicing so you can be going out there to a grocery store and being able to identify these important nutrients Thank you, Esmeralda. This has been extremely informative, and thank you to you, the viewer, who has made this such a dynamic conversation about vegetarianism. So an exciting thing that we have also prepared for you is that if you enjoyed this particular uh, topic and you want to share this lecture or this series with someone else, we will have archived this particular presentation from Esmeralda for you so you can actually send the link to all of your friends and family. We have Wellness Live available every single month and we have wonderful topics from Loma Linda University Health Experts. Again, my name is Dr. Olivia Moses. Thank you for joining us and see you next time.